Namaste. So now let's take a detailed look at the first shloka of the Shiva Panchakshara Stotra. Each word in the first three lines is one of the holy names of Shiva. Actually, all five verses are like this, and only the last line is a little bit explanatory. And so let's go through each one of them and discuss the meaning. First is Nagendraharaya, which is a compound of three words. Naga, Indra, and Haraya. Naga means snake, Indra means king, and Haraya means ornament or dress. So a garland or like a necklace or something like that, or on his arms, armlets, bracelets, like that. So Shiva, we see in his pictures all the time, is wearing these snakes around his neck, around his arms, wherever, right? even on his head. <laughs> so what does this mean? Vasuki is the king of not ordinary snakes, but the celestial snakes, the Nagas. Now the Nagas are great devotees. They're very close to Shiva and Shakti, and they carry out a lot of his directives. So they're always to be found nearby, wherever Shiva is located. And also they have mystic powers. They have a great deal of spiritual knowledge. And of course, snakes, you know, they have their own ways, uh, very mysterious. <laughs> But uh, they are highly erotic and they enjoy the touch of Shiva's cool body. Because his body is always cool. After all, Ganga is coming down on his head and he lives on top of Mount Kailash, which is always enveloped in snow and ice. So Shiva is very, very cool. And so even at that altitude, Snakes like to come around him and take uh, shelter of him and actually coil themselves around his body and like that. So uh, this is the nature of Shiva. Shiva is always cool. Shiva is always attractive. And he's attractive not only to human beings, males and females, but he's even attractive to animals because of all of his qualities. I mean, just unlimited qualities. So the Nagas are very pious, even though they're snakes, just like the cows and animals in the spiritual world. The lions, for example, I have intimate knowledge of the lions. Uh, they're very intelligent and they recognize Shiva. They know Shiva and Shakti by their qualities and they're attracted, they're enlightened, they're liberated souls. That's why they're in the spiritual world. So they come around and associate with Shiva and Shakti in different ways and serve them, help them in their pastimes in innumerable ways. So the next one, Tri Lochanaya. Tri means three, Lochana means eyes, and Aya is a case ending, meaning the dative case, unto one who has three eyes, three lochanaya. So Shiva is always shown with two eyes open and one eye, the eye in his forehead, which is vertical, closed. And why is that? Well, because when he opens that eye, Look out, it's the end of the world. <laughs> the fire that comes out of that eye destroys the whole material creation. So this is a, a particular quality of Shiva, Shakti, and their immediate expansionists, such as Rudra. And uh, they have this quality of uh, being able to destroy everything. Shiva also creates everything. 
So if he wants to destroy it, you know, it's up to him. It's his property. It's his universe. If he wants to destroy it, what's going to stop him? So that's Trilochanaya. Next one is Bhasmangaragaya. This is also a compound word. Bhasma, of course, means this holy ash, the trice pure. Uh, trice, three times pure, because it's made from cow dung, which is pure, and it's heated like white hot in the fire in an airtight container. So it's purified by fire. And then it's purified by offering to the Shiva Linga. So it's three times pure, thrice pure. Uh, bhasma. That's why we put it on our body in these three lines, Tripundra. And Angara, Angara means uh, that his body is smeared. Angara means body, and Lagaya means to smear all over. So he's smeared all over with this ash. That's why he looks white instead of blue, which is his natural color. Uh, so uh, it's an interesting compound because Angara Lagaya be called, becomes Angaraya, Bhasmangaraya, Maheshwaraya, unto the greatest controller, Ishwara. I mean, Ishwara means controller. Isha means the first. So he is the first among beings. He, therefore, is the God, the creator, the owner, the enjoyer, the controller, and so on. And none other but Shiva. So he is known throughout the scriptures as Mahesh or Maheshwara. Nityaya, he's eternal. Eternal means not subject to time. We see the influence of time in the material world that everything comes into being at a certain point in time. It exists for a certain duration of time. And then when its time is finished, it dwindles and disappears, actually is transformed into something else. So Shankaracharya uses the example of a pot. The pot is nothing but clay. When clay is in the ground, it's formless. But then when it's taken out and turned by the potter, it makes is a pot. But it's still just the same clay. Similarly, when the pot is finally used up and broken, then it goes back into the earth and again becomes clay. So the pot is always clay. But it's only a pot, or recognized or called a pot, when it can hold liquids and things like that, a container. That's its function. So we name it a pot because it has that function, because it has that particular shape. Now, a pot can be made of clay or metal or ceramic or any kind of material, but it's a pot because of its function. And when that function is no longer possible, when it's broken, and we don't call it a pot anymore. It again becomes clay. So in the same way, this whole world is actually Shiva. And he's unchanging, Nityaya, unto the unchanging one, the eternal one. Uh, we offer our humble obeisances. Shuddhaya, he's pure. Unto him who is completely shuddha, means faultless, spotless, clean, pure. And he is the one against whom everything is measured in terms of purity. So he is the supreme pure, the supreme uh, origin of everything, but also the supreme end of everything. Everything exists in time, but Shiva is beyond time. 
Digambaraya, unto the naked one. <laughs> Dish means the directions. Actually, it means all around, all the directions. Up, down, sideways, backwards, you know, everywhere, every which way. Dish. And Ambara means pervading all around. Huh? So, Digambaraya is the compound of these two words. And it means one who is clothed in the directions. Uh, in other words, he's naked. <laughs> it's a discreet way of saying he's naked. He doesn't have any clothes. Why? Clothes are ego. They represent ego. Don't we identify someone by the clothes they wear? Uh, they say the clothes make the man. And certainly we treat someone differently if they're dressed like a bum or they're dressed up in a, a nice suit or something like that. Or we treat someone differently if they're wearing the dress of a sannyasi. For example, uh, no one in India or Sri Lanka would approach a sannyasi with any kind of uh, sexual offers. Uh, so the clothes give a message about the identity of the person wearing them. That's ego. Uh, because actually, nobody is a bum, nobody is a rich man, nobody is a king, nobody is a cop, nobody is, you know, a rock star, or whatever your clothes say about you. These are just costumes. They are temporary. You put them on in the morning and take them off at night, unless you're one of those weirdos who sleeps in your clothes. <laughs> It's like sleeping in your ego. But the real self is who we are when we take off all of these artificial things, all these temporary things, including the body. So Shiva, he doesn't have any clothes. He doesn't even really have a body. He just assumes a certain form for the purposes of pastimes with his devotees. But actually... That's not him. So he's not attached. He doesn't care about clothing. He doesn't care about any material situation or title or function. He just is what he is. Huh? It says in the Bible, God was speaking to Moses through the burning bush. And he says, I am what I am. This is possibly the best description of God in all of Western religion. <laughs> but here we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven words describing God. Uh, Nagendra, Trilochana, Basmangaraya, Maheshwaraya, Nityaya, Shuddhaya, Digamparaya. And unto God in all these forms, in all these aspects, Tasmai, Therefore, nakaraya, unto him who becomes or is manifested in or is represented by the syllable of na. Remember, all these five verses, each one stands for one syllable of the Panchakshara mantra. And the first one is na, ma, she, va, ya. So this verse also begins with the letter na. Na gendraharaya. Huh? Very clever and beautiful poetic use of Sanskrit by Shankaracharya. All his stuff is like this. Nakaraya, namashivaya. Obeisances, salutations, greetings, and love towards our Lord Shiva.